Welcome back, everybody, to the GSMC Hoops and Heels Women's Sports Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. We just got done doing a little preview of the 2024 ShopRite LPGA Classic this weekend, and now we're going to talk about the best players in the NWSL so far this season. Before we begin, I wanted to remind you guys to like and follow the show and to become a part of our show to tip and donate using the link gsmcpodcast.net. We also get a lot of questions from viewers during the show, so to make sure that your comments get read and answered on the air, I recommend using the link. Once again, the link is gsmcpodcast.net. We really do appreciate the support. It makes a huge difference, guys. And make sure you guys go to the end of the show to hear about predictions for the D1 Outdoor Track and Field Championships. Okay, now let's get started. Okay, so this is in no particular order. I just want to point that out here. Um, these are just a list of people that have been staying out so far this season. So the order means nothing. It's also kind of, okay, I guess, I'm sorry, guys. Maybe this is disorganized. But when I was, you know, putting my list of best plays out there, I wasn't putting in, like, categories of positions or categories of, like, teams. So I apologize that if it seems disorganized. Um, but this is also no particular order. So this is not saying, like, these are the best from the season and whatnot. Um, Because if I were going to do that, this order would be different, but um, that is not what we're doing here today. Except, although the first person I do think is the number one best player in this this season so far. Barbara Banda, yay! Like, obviously I'm saying that. She plays for the Orlando Pride, and as we know, the Pride takes first right now in the league. They are in a winning streak right now, and I think they are the absolute best team in the league this year. For the last five games, Banda has started each game and has scored a goal in all but one. In May's first match with the North Carolina Courage, Banda scored two goals. In the May 5th match with the Racing Louisville, Banda scored one goal. At the May 19th match with the Seattle Reign, she scored two goals. And lastly, at the May 24th match with the Portland Thorns, she scored another two goals. She has been leading her team and the league with goals scored and has also been successful in assists, including three braces in the last five games, which is a huge part as to why her team has been so successful this season. In my opinion, she is the best forward in the league and maybe even the best offensive player. Moving on, we have Trinity Robin from the Washington Spirit. She is a winger for them. She is more involved in defensive actions than most defenders in the league and contributes significantly to the Spirit's success in the season. In the 10 matches she's played, she has had three goals and four assists. She's had 15 shots on target so far, so I think three out of 15 is a good percentage at the moment. For her, yeah, no, she's definitely a stand-up winger on the team. Like, when you're looking at the team, like, when you are truly just watching that side of the field, that team, when the Washington Spirit are going against their their opponents, she really stands out as a player, and she's been playing a lot of minutes. Next, we got to talk about Corey Bethune from Washington Spirit. She's an attacking midfielder. Bethune immediately stepped into the number 10 role for the Spirit and scored three important goals. She also ranked in the top 10 in chance creation and pass completion percentage in the final third in the league the nwsl can be unforgiving to rookies i also forgot to mention she is a rookie this year so this is super impressive that she is on this on this list so yeah the league can be unforgiving to rookies but right now bethune is making the case for a chance for the u.s women's national team which is huge she started 11 games so far and she has scored four goals and had eight assists She's had nine goals on target so far, so that's a great ratio there, obviously. I, I'm i really impressed by her. She's always been known in, when she was playing for college soccer, but now that she's on the NWSL League, it's like a whole different world has opened up for her. Now we got to bring up an amazing defender. Naomi Gurma on the San Diego Wave has been dominating her center back position. She was a finalist for MVP as a rookie in 2022, and this year I think she could possibly take an MVP honor. She's strong, speedy, and a solid backline for the team. I feel like she builds most of the confidence for the team, for the defense on the team, and what I mean by that is if everyone else just had an off day and let the ball go right through their legs, they could trust Gurma to defend their goal with the center back position. One of the biggest aspects you need in the center back is trust, and the San Diego Wave can trust Gurma, and that's how I sort of decide if someone is a good center back or not. She's she's like a wall for the team, I feel like. She's really impressed me. Next, we have the iconic, and I'm sorry, I'm not going to say his name correct, 
Bia Sanerato, the forward on the Kansas City Current. She's had four goals and two assists so far, and she has had six shots on target, so that percentage is looking great. On She's unstoppable, simply put. Twice this season, the forward has made a defender bounce off of her like a Super Bowl striking payment before she buried one of her four goals. No player has been more involved in attacking sequences per 90 minutes, and she's tied for the lead in duels, which is a byproduct of the current smothering high press. What would make her a stronger forward is if her teammates can help her make more opportunities. She has gotten a lot of opportunities so far displayed by her goals and assists, but still the Kansas City Current is not the strongest team in the league right now, and they all need to make more opportunities offensively. She has amazing shooting abilities, and she's fast, so she can be trusted by her team offensively, and I, I think she is. I just do wish I have seen more opportunities on the offensive side for the Kansas City Current so far in this league. Also... On the Kansas City current uh, team is Temwa Chawinga as their winger, and she's been <laughs> definitely a standout player. She's running onto the ball, and behind must literally be every defender's worst nightmare right now. Chawinga also has four goals and two assists, and she's a big reason why Kansas City is undefeated with 17 goals score. Few players can change the game like she does, and she's unstoppable, just like, um, I'm going to try to say this last name correctly again. Um, guys, I'm so sorry, I'm so bad at names. She's unstoppable, just like a Zanarato. Zanarato. I believe that's actually how you say that, Zanarato. Anyway, basically what I'm saying is Kansas City Current has been doing really good. They have made... I do want to say they have been making very good opportunities offensively since they are literally undefeated and they've had a lot of goals, but I was just saying with, uh, I do wish that I have seen Bia Zanaretto make more goals, if that makes sense. Does that make sense? I don't even know if that makes sense. I'm losing my mind. Anyway, next I got to mention, mention Ashley Sanchez, a forward on the North Carolina Courage. She has started all 11 games for her team and scored one goal and had three assists. When comparing her to the other forwards we talked about in the segment, it seems like she isn't one of the best forwards in the league. But I personally think she is. She's a playmaker, and she can make stuff happen in the attack, which is something the team, including the USWNT, should consider having her on the team again, like desperately needs with the Olympics right now in the corner. Okay, I don't know if that made any sense, but the USWNT is still looking for people on the team, and I think they should reconsider having her on the team because she's a playmaker, and they need that, especially with the Olympics coming up. But also, I was saying that in the league, in the NWSL, I think she's one of the best forwards because she's a playmaker. Even if she's not scoring a 1,000 goals in one game, she is helping her teammates score a bunch of goals. She's been very... She's contributed a lot to assists, so she's been making stuff happen. Moving on to Taylor Flint, a star midfielder for the Racing Louisville. She received Team of the Month honors for her hot start to the season, as announced by the league in the beginning of May. She was named to the league's best 11 for the month of March and April after a standout seven games, playing every minute while helping Louisville club to its first six-match unbeaten run. She also ranks first in the NWSL in block shots, interceptions, and tackles. One. Second in duels one, fourth in aerial duels one, and fifth in possession recoveries among non-goalkeepers. She's also third on the team in progressive passes and shots on target. Because of her impressive seasons, Flynn has made 12 appearances in the USWNT, scoring two goals and helping the Stars and Stripes to a CONCACAF Women's Championship in 2022. She's always been an amazing player, and this isn't shocking that she's on this list, that she's one of the best players in the league so far. She just always is here as one of the best players. Same with Barbara Brando. Like, they're always going to be one of the best players in the league. Now, I, I, we got to mention another defender here, and I wanted to put some spotlight on the defenders from the Orlando Pride because they wouldn't be in the lead right now if in the league if they didn't have an unbreakable defense. The two defenders on the Pride that really stand out to me are Emily Sams and Kylie Strom. Sam started the season playing her usual position at center back, but she shifted the last few matches to an outside fullback that is really, and she's really thrived in that role, underscoring her vers versatility as a player. Getting involved in the attack while also being fourth in the league in tackles one and the defensive third goes to show just how versatile she has been for this team and then 
You can't forget the absolute scream when she scored against the Seattle Rain for her first goal with the Pride, which is insane. <laughs> Kylie Strom, who played all last year as a left back and thrived there, having a career year in 2023, is another scene out so far this season. Much like Sam, she shifted inside to play alongside Raphael at center back, and she continues to be a massive presence in defense and offense, often being the initiator of plays down the other end of the pitch. In Stromstead, Carrie Abello has locked down the left back role, leading the team in tackles and sitting 12th in all of the NWSL in that stat. Lastly, I wanted to mention two standout goalkeepers in the NWSL. Anna Morehouse ha- from the Atlanta Pride has been the self proclaimed tree to the cuties for the back line. She's leading the league in clean sheets and third in goals conceded. She has helped make the Pride defense one of the toughest to break down the season, giving their first place position in the league at the moment. It hasn't just been her shot stopping ability that has been impactful, it's her ability to coordinate and manage the defense in front of her as well. As the tree she helps the defenders and even midfielders in front of her stay rooted in their communication making sure everyone is on the same page as they did all the back with the way the pride like to play her position is one of the most influential in terms of building into the attack whether it's simple passes into the defensive line or a boot down the downfield each decision she makes plays a part in how the pride decide to attack is what i am saying here and I think that she is the best goalkeeper in the league right now. But following in second, the other goalkeeper I wanted to mention is Cassie Murphy. I mean, Casey Murphy for the North Carolina Courage. I apologize we're here. The picture has Orlando Pride. I'm sorry. It's been a long day. We're all human. We all make mistakes, guys. I'm very sorry. But she plays for the North Carolina Courage, not the Orlando Pride. During last year's season, she made 20 starts, collected 9 clean sheets, and made 46 saves, and then was named to the NWSL Best 11 for the month of June. During this year's season, she has still been the same dominating goalkeeper for the league alongside Morehouse. She's had 4 clean sheets so far and 29 saves. She's a hard defender for the North Carolina Courage and has really taken leadership on the field for the team. Now we're going to move on to our next segment where we talk about the college softball's all-time home run leaders. Before we get into that, we're going to be taking a very, very short break, so I will see you guys very 